Hello, it's me back again. I'm not even going to pretend like, oh, I'm going to be consistent this time because every time I post a new video, I'm like, oh, I haven't posted in forever, but I'm going to be consistent from now on. And then I don't post again. So I'm not even going to lie and say that I'm going to be consistent because it's probably not true. But hello, I'm back. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I got a first at uni. So someone in my previous video was like, oh, you did this whole thing talking about how you're fine with being an average student because at the time when I made that video, I was getting two ones. And then it wasn't even a video like reacting to my grades or anything, I don't think, but I was just talking about my life. And in that video, I said that I got a first. And then the commenter was like, how did you get a first? Or how did you go from a two one to getting a first? So I'm talking about that in today's video. Also, I'm filming like way more zoomed out than usual. And I feel like it's like a cuter vibe, but I don't know, we'll see. If you guys hate it, sorry. Um, so yeah, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I got first. And obviously this is like specific to me. If you follow all of those, these things and you don't get a first, like it's not because you did something wrong or that like these are explicit instructions. And also potentially if I didn't do this, I would have gotten a first or potentially if I did do this and like the people grading my stuff were in a worse mood then I wouldn't have gotten a first. So basically what I'm trying to say is this isn't an instruction manual and this isn't like, oh, this is definitely the reason why I got a first. It's just like why I think I managed to get a first. So yeah, also I like scraped a first, scraped. I mean, a first is a first, but I'm just saying if you're like trying to look how to get like AT in a humanities degree, uh, this video is not for you. If someone wants to tell me how to do that, that would be cute. Um, not that I'm like in uni anymore, I have a job. But anyway, so everyone watching this is probably like, please shut up and get on with the video. So genuinely, the way that I got it first is like all strategy, I think. So there's gonna be three main tips in this video for the strategies involved in getting a first. So first thing is don't do things that you don't have to do. So Unless you're going into academia, like this probably, this video doesn't apply to you if you're going into academia. If you're trying to like do a master's or a PhD, like clip off this video because it's not for you. This is for me personally, I wanted to graduate with a first, but I knew I wasn't going to stay in academia. I wanted to go get a job. So this is for people like me. So first strategy, don't do things you don't need to do. For me in my department, I did not need to do a dissertation. That's obviously not the case at all departments or at all universities or whatever it is. If you haven't watched my previous videos before, I did philosophy at UCL and in our department, we didn't need to do a dissertation. So the reason I didn't do a dissertation wasn't specifically like, oh, I don't think that I'm gonna get first, but part of it was strategic in the sense that I knew that if I did badly on my dissertation, that would count more than doing badly in just one module. Two, I knew that it would be really time consuming and stressful. And because it's kind of like a passion project type thing or something that you put a lot of time and energy into, that I would probably end up consuming more of my time and energy on the disc than on my other work, especially proportionate to how much it's actually worth as part of your grade. And three, I like philosophy and like, I'm really glad that I did it as a degree, but I didn't have one specific thing that I was passionate enough about to do a dis in. Now that I've finished my degree, if I had to do a dis, I would have done it in philosophy of religion. And that's like what I was considering at the time anyway. But when we had to choose our topics, I hadn't done philosophy of religion because it was a third year course for me and blah, blah, blah. So those are the reasons why I didn't do a dis. And I think not doing one like really helped me to get a first. And that's because I knew that with a dis, like there was a high potential that it could go badly if I didn't have a good supervisor. And because it's worth more than just one module, I was like, I'm not going to stress myself out giving myself extra work to do when I don't have to give myself extra work. And I knew I wasn't going to go into academia. And two, like, I just didn't want to risk the potential of that. So just don't do things that you don't have to do, basically, is my point. Like, don't take unnecessarily hard modules because you think it looks good and don't do a diss if you don't need to do a diss because you think that it looks good. Like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what looks good or it doesn't look good if your goal is specifically to get a first. Now, if your goal is like to challenge yourself, which is a perfectly fine goal as well, like good for you that that's what you wanna do with your time at university, then again, like you don't have to take this advice, go do the modules that you find interesting and the modules that you find challenging. Uh, but if you wanna get a first, like don't waste your time doing stuff you don't have to do. 
My second strategic advice is to figure out what you're good at, even if that doesn't necessarily align with what you're interested in. So for me personally, like a lot of people I think our age doing philosophy, a lot of what I like discussing with my friends or like talking about or the readings in particular that I enjoyed were always in applied ethics, basically. So at UCL, I think I might have said this in a previous video, but I don't remember. There's three categories, A, B, and C. A is like theoretical stuff, so like uh, logic or like philosophy of mind, philosophy of language, whatever. B is applied stuff, so feminism and philosophy, regulation of intimacy, uh, stuff like that. And then C is history, so it will be like Plato, Kant, and like a history of that particular philosopher, etc. So those are like the three main categories. They do probably have actual names, I just don't know what they are. So for me, the thing that I was most interested in probably in terms of like the readings I found the best and things like that was in category B. And those are like, I think kind of the things that people think about typically when they think about philosophy. But I always got two ones in those classes. Like I got decent high two ones, but I have never gotten a first in an applied ethics or category B module. And so even though I found it interesting, I knew that it didn't make sense to load up my course with category B modules because it meant that I was highly unlikely to get a first. And I did take some, I took quite a few actually, because I knew that was what I was interested in. And I didn't want to just take courses that like I had no interest in. Like I picked ones that I liked, but I knew that I couldn't choose all category B because then I wouldn't get first. And when I look at my final grades and my modules, I got high two ones in all of those subjects as expected. So makes sense. The topics I tend to do well in are A and C. So I picked more A and C classes. And so I would say like be strategic in what you know that you're good at, not necessarily what you're just interested in. And similarly to that, choose your lecturers based off of that. Again, it shouldn't be like the lecturer that you get on with the best. It should be the lecturer that you feel like is going to teach you in a way that will get you a good grade. So in second year, I did a course on Kant and that was the highest grade that I got. Um, oh no, I got one higher grade in third year, which I'll talk about that class specifically in a bit. Um, but other than that, Kant was the highest grade that I got. And the only reason why I got that grade is because of my seminar leader. It was not because of the lecturer. The lecturer is like really, really smart, a big expert on Kant, but I had no idea what was happening. The lectures went on for so long and my brain could not do that. So in third year, I was really lucky because I did pick his course at first because I was trying to be strategic. And the first lesson I was like, I have no idea what's happening. And I like dropped that course and switched into another one very, very quickly. Um, but yeah, so I would say, it's good to follow your interests, like do stuff that you're interested in, but you should course load with the things that you're going to do well in. And again, this is specifically if you want to get first, if you just want to like make the most out of your university experience in terms of studying what you're interested in, then obviously do that. But for me personally, I was like, okay, I'm going to pick a lot of the subjects that I know I'll probably do well in. And even in the ones that I thought I would still get a high T1, which I did, like I still tried my best and tried to learn from my peers who tended to get first in those subjects and like read their essays and try to understand how they were getting those grades and I wasn't. But at the end of the day, like those things just clearly weren't my strong suit. And even though I enjoy the classes and like getting a high two one is still really good, I just knew I wasn't going to get a first from those. And then this third strategic thing I would suggest is take a PhD student run class. So obviously not every department and not every university offers this. At my department, I took a class and this was the class where I got the highest mark that I've ever gotten at university, like way higher than my other modules. And it was a class of three people, including me. And then the lecturer or the teacher was a PhD candidate, not a professor. And the reason why I would suggest taking these really small classes that aren't run by a professor is PhD students tend to have a lot more time and they'll probably only be teaching that one class or that one class and maybe a couple of other classes where they're obviously not the lecturer or the professor for that class. Two, they know what it's like or they remember more what it's like to be a student and to be struggling so they will go out of their way to help you more. And three, this is kind of maybe unethical but when you get your papers graded normally, right? Like the professor has probably never read it before and doesn't know that it's you. So you 
having a good relationship with the professor has nothing to do with your grade. But for me, I definitely felt like the reason why I partially did well is because I like always went to my PhD teacher for like advice. And I always asked him like, oh, can you read these parts of my essay and like try to discuss them with him. So I'm pretty sure when he went to market, like he knew that it was my essay. Um, and because we had a good relationship, obviously, like, I'm sure that he tried to be a, as objective and as unbiased as possible. But obviously, like, having a positive relationship does influence the grade that they give you. So, yeah, I'm not saying, like, manipulate your teachers. But when you have, like, a PhD candidate, I think it's much easier to have that relationship. And, like, they're more willing to read over your work multiple times and, like, to give you advice and have discussions about the essay. And that was definitely, like, my favorite class that I did while at university because I think Previously, I had tried to, you know, be strategic and get a first, and so I wouldn't really go out of the box in terms of what I wrote my essays about, which is also partially because of the tutor that I had in first year who basically told me, like, I should only stick to, like, easy topics because I wouldn't be able to do well in difficult ones, which was really, like, unfortunate that I had that experience because I think it made me more reluctant to explore things I was interested in. But anyway, because I was able to, like, talk to my teacher a lot in this class, it meant that I was able to explore a subject that might have been more difficult for me to write because he gave me like a lot of advice and a lot of guidance and a lot of feedback and I found that really really helpful and so I think that also helped me do well in that class and to be honest if you just want to scrape a first like you only really need that one grade to pull the rest of your grades up and so because I had that it like pulled the rest of my grades up because as I said like I did do a fair amount of those category B modules where I did get a high 2-1 so having that grade pull up I think made a big difference so yeah obviously there are other things you should do to get first like you should go to office hours you should make sure that you go to every lecture and every seminar like I don't think I skipped any of my classes in third year or I missed like a couple because I was ill or whatever, but like I didn't intentionally skip any of my classes whilst I was in third year. So I think that's important. Obviously, like doing your reading is important, making sure you do all of the formative essays so that you can get feedback so that when it comes to writing your summative, you know what you did wrong the first time around. Like a lot of people skip out on the things that aren't mandatory. And obviously I said at the beginning of this video, like don't do stuff you don't have to do, which is true, but that's only in the case when those things aren't going to help you and like aren't relevant to your studies and to your life. But like writing formative essays is really helpful, making sure you talk to your professors or the PhD students that are leading new seminars and things like that. Like those things are all important to getting a first. And like I've definitely made previous videos talking about like how to get a first on an essay or how to do well in a class. So like take that advice obviously but in terms of strategy of getting a first then like you can do all those things but if you're picking modules that you know you're probably not going to do well in or if you are taking on way too much extra stuff and like doing a dissertation when you don't have to do a dissertation it's not that you're unlikely to get a first or anything like that but you're just making your path to getting a first a lot harder so I hope that makes sense so basically my three overall strategies for getting a first are one don't do things you don't have to do. So for me personally, that was wow. don't do a dissertation when I don't have to do a dissertation and I know I'm not going to go into academia. Two, pick the things that you're good at, not necessarily the things that you're going to be interested in. So that applies both for the classes that you pick and also the professors that you choose to have those classes with. And three, try and take small classes that are taught specifically by PhD students or professors that you know are going to have more time and more energy to dedicate to you specifically rather than their other classes or their own work. So yeah, I know that literally only one person in my comment section asked for this video, but hopefully you find that helpful for like understanding how I went from being a 2-1 kind of average student to getting a first. So yeah. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Also, I know that I wear like the same outfit in every single video and you're gonna see it in the next few videos because I'm gonna film all of these at once. So yeah. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below anything you want to comment down below. If you would like to see more videos like this from me, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you're notified every time I post a new video. Thank you for watching.